All right. And it looks like we are live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome to another episode of the Daily Digital Design Show. Um, today is July 2nd, 2022. And uh, we got a couple of things to talk about. So the first thing is what virtual reality is doing for humans, not only humans, but also in animals. Uh, virtual reality has been uh, used in many ways, good ways, not just gaming. Uh, I wanted to kind of spread a little highlight on that. Um, another thing is, I know you've probably heard of the Play to Earn community, um, but they've got something that adds a little bit of a twist to the Play to Earn uh, method. So definitely stay tuned and we'll jump right into it. All right, welcome back, everybody. So as I've mentioned, uh, a lot of people have heard of P2E, that just stands for Play to Earn, where uh, people from, I don't know, young age all the way to old age uh, play video games and actually earn real money from doing so. Uh, it definitely became a big thing in the past couple of years, uh, especially with cryptocurrency, uh, NFTs, all of that being adding into these gaming platforms. Uh, if you heard of Fortnite, which is a really big game, uh, a lot of people have been playing that and then also making some money from it. Um, Axie Infinity is also another really big game, play to earn game that uh, a lot of people have been making some money on. But here's another thing, E to E. Yes, I just made that up, but it just stands for exercise to earn. Um, there's basically a, just a bunch of different iOS and Android applications uh, that allow you to make money while you do something that you may already be doing or something that you have been thinking about doing um, for a long time. Um, they are basically going to just pay you for exercising. This is just another way for people to gain some passive income. Uh, like I said, if you already exercise, then you can uh, upload one of these apps to your devices. Uh, everybody has them pretty much nowadays. So go ahead and continue exercising and then open up the app. The app will do its thing. It will track all of your uh, exercises if you go running or if you go lifting or anything like that. And then it will also pay you money for actually doing so. Uh, I have a website here from looks like Bravery Travel who actually went through a couple of different apps. I'm not sure if they tested them all or not. Uh, usually some of these websites just, you know, just find them and, and talk about them a little bit. But it would be nice if they actually tested them uh, so that they can report out some true findings from it. But they do have a couple here uh, on their list in which you can actually choose from. I myself hasn't touched any of these, so don't take my word for it. Definitely go out there do your research, figure out which one is beneficial to you to start making some passive income uh, just to exercise. Um, I actually used one uh, a little bit before in the past. It was called Sweatcoin, which is actually uh, a cryptocurrency uh, token um, that actually did pay you for walking. It attracted all the time that you were moving and it appraised you in their own coin. Uh, so I'm not sure. There's one thing you have to look out for is this are these apps actually going to be paying you in some sort of token or in some sort of cryptocurrency coin, or are they actually going to be paying you in real currency, uh, no matter if it's the pound, uh, the US dollar, the yen or whatever. Um, so just make sure you keep, keep that in mind when you are looking for some of these uh, different platforms to use. Uh, this one's called RunKeeper. I'm assuming they're gonna track all the times that you run. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so for every mile you log, you earn points that can be redeemed for gift cards or cash via PayPal. Um, so that's actually a pretty good note there. Runkeeper. I would. I would. That's one I would actually probably would try to use. Um, oh wait. So it looks like they have a cost. Cost uh, free with optional premium features like ad removal, six dollars a month, and training plan four dollars a month, uh, and you can download it. So I don't know. I, would you actually pay? for an app that <laughs> that, is, that is supposed to be paying you? Uh, what if you're paying for it and you know you miss a month or something like that? Um, I, it does say that it's free, but it has the option to upgrade, which is uh, it was, it's actually pretty nice in that case. Uh, fit Fitocracy, I guess that's what it's called. Fitocracy, um, wow, ev evidation. I'm assuming it's like evidence, but evidation. Um, Healthy wage, I can actually pronounce that right off the bat. Clue, 
I was surprised they actually got the name Clue. I wonder if they have a website. Uh, so yeah, so there's a bunch of different ones out here that you can kind of check out. Um, Strava, there's 20 of them total. I'll definitely put the link to this uh, this article, this website on the description for this video. Uh, so definitely take a moment to look at them and then you know see which one works out for you. My Walgreens, uh, you can earn Walgreens cash. Uh, I don't I don't even remember when the last time I went to Walgreens, but this is probably one I would actually use, uh, and I would you know probably start working uh, or probably start going back into going into Walgreens, um, which is actually another point. Some of these companies, if you have a business yourself, some of these companies uh, are doing stuff like this to bring traffic, to bring uh, that audience back into their stores. So um, Walgreens, if this is actually by Walgreens, uh, if they're the ones that created this, this is a good way to bring customers back into their stores and reuse those same funds that they just paid them to exercise to reuse that right back in their stores. Um, so just a little tip in mind, if you have a business yourself, you might want to keep that in mind. All right, so the next item up here is kind of a two for one deal. Um, the first one is going to be about humans and then the next one is going to be about animals. But either way, uh, in both cases, they are both using virtual reality headsets for the benefit of the user. So uh, a website called Circus Stream, I visit Circus Stream quite often. Uh, has an article called virtual reality therapy as exposure therapy alternative so what exactly does that mean they are actually using virtual reality virtual reality headsets as a form of therapy for people with uh, mental health issues for people with addiction issues um, even ptsd uh, i think they even said in this article about them using uh, virtual reality for children with autism and stuff like that uh, which in my opinion, I think this is actually pretty cool. I think this could actually go somewhere. Uh, this article was published June 1st, 2022. Uh, so not too long ago. And um, if I'm coming down here, I think there's a few things I want to touch on. Um, I guess it said it's been doing this since 1995 at Georgia Tech. Um, it cured people, well, I don't say cured, but it helped people who had fear of heights to actually be able to, uh, looks like walk up 72 flights of stairs. Um, or no, no, they used to walk up 72 flights of stairs. Now they were able to take a glass elevator to a rooftop, uh, which is actually pretty cool. So it looks like what they're doing is that they are immersing people inside of these virtual reality environments. And then from there, they are taking their, I want to say their worst fears. Um, but they're taking their worst fears and they are actually bringing that to them in a controlled manner, in a controlled state where a therapist is there right along with them and allowing them to be immersed in that environment so they can attack their fears head on. Uh, so, for example, if you have a fear of spiders, uh, there is absolutely 100 percent no harm to you with this virtual reality headset. You can um, put the headset on, look at your arm. There could be a spider that's crawling on you. Yes, of course, it'll creep you out because mentally you're in that same mindset, but you're able to, with the help of the therapist, get over that fear. Likewise, um, with the, uh, what's it called? What's with the veterans, uh, they said that they are putting these veterans um, with PTSD back into that same state when, they, uh, uh, when the PTSD basically occurred, uh, whether it be at war or, you know, in another country. Um, they're actually putting them back into this same state and essentially making them relive it in a different mindset, different frame with the help of uh, the therapist to kind of coach them along, coach them through to uh, get over that PTSD that they have uh, due to, you know, that tragedy. I'm assuming that could be for, you know, anybody, not just uh, veterans in war. A lot of people have PTSD, so hopefully that can benefit them as well. Um, a few things about this uh, benefits of VR therapy uh, is definitely accessible. There are uh, now more and more more headsets becoming available. Um, not all of them, which in my opinion aren't that um, affordable. I would say uh, some of them are actually quite expensive. The Oculus uh, headset by Meta, aka Facebook, 
Uh, those ones range about two to three hundred dollars, maybe four hundred dollars um, for the you know larger set. But I don't know. It depends on you know if you're using it for a business. If you're going to spend a thousand dollars on a headset, it's actually going to be beneficial for other people. And yeah, you know that, that it makes sense to actually do that. But if you're just going to be you know dropping ten grand on a headset and you know playing video games for your leisure, I think that's a bit expensive. Um, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, one thing also is a control. These headsets are being placed on these people uh, with the help of an actual licensed therapist. So they are not just being thrown out there, um, basically head to the wolves and whatnot. They are actually being in a controlled state with a actual therapist that will help them uh, guide them along through that process. Um, and then immersion, like I said before, is a really big part of it. Uh, because you can be fully inside of what they call the metaverse now and essentially get cured. Um, this, that's, that's the whole goal of it. Uh, the couple downsides of it, disadvantages of it, uh, expensive hardware, which is, yeah, like I said, that's a big thing there. Um, reliability issues. Uh, I think these headsets are actually getting a whole lot better. Uh, I think with the uh, Wi-Fi and stuff like that, as long as you got a strong enough Wi-Fi, I have an Oculus headset myself. As long as you have a strong enough Wi-Fi, it, I never had any issues with it. But I can't speak on you know anybody else who's been using it longer than I have. Um, but I think the technology has come a long way, and then uh, you know it'll help out a lot of people. Um, there's a couple of case studies that they went through. I guess this is uh, this is them using it on the kids here as well. Use it on patients and for addiction purposes. Um, looks like one neuroscientist is actually uh, giving this a good thumbs up here. And uh, oh yeah, this is nice. Um, so they actually provided, uh, in case anybody is interested, they actually provided a couple of companies that are providing these uh, VR therapy services to. Uh, the public. So Amelia Virtual Care, I'm not sure where that's located. Um, virtually, virtually Better, Brave Mind, First Hand Technology, and Applied VR. Um, <laughs> they, they call themselves the Netflix of the therapeutic. Uh, okay, that's nice. I'll probably check into that company. I like to look into some of these companies and see what they're actually doing, uh, keeping up with them and, you know, Maybe I might <laughs> use them myself or later on in the future. Um, but yeah, so if you guys are interested in some virtual reality therapy, here's a couple of companies that could help you out. Um, and uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm actually curious to see if you guys think this would actually help out a lot of people. Uh, in my opinion, I think it will, especially if it is done the right way. Um, I don't see why this can't cure a lot, a lot of people. Uh, I would really like it to see if, you know, um, a person who has been injured, um, they, what I don't know, got in a car accident and they can't feel their legs, they can't move their legs or whatever. Um, usually the reason for that, well, I don't say usually, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say usually, but in my opinion, one of the reasons for that is because um, they at one point were not able to uh, work those muscles. Uh, I know that has something to do with like their, their nerves and stuff like that as well, but uh, the muscles play a big role in that. And if you could actually um, take a VR headset, you know, have their mental state be in a process, <clears throat> be in a mindset of them actually using their legs or them actually using their arms and hands and stuff like that, uh, even though it's not actually working in the real world, in the virtual world, they can actually see their hand moving, then it'll start working with that muscle memory. Um, and then from that muscle memory, it'll actually help the healing process of their actual real hands, their real legs and stuff like that. So just by seeing that, I don't know if anybody has heard of like the, uh, the phantom limbs, phantom arm, phantom legs, when uh, someone gets their arm chopped off or something like that, but they can kind of actually still feel like their arm is still there with them. Uh, this is kind of the reverse side of it where their arm is still there, but they can't exactly feel it, but they're using that virtual reality headset in order to kind of simulate the fact that it is still working and it's still there and kind of trick their body into making it actually work. Uh, that'll be something I would like to see a whole, whole lot there. 
Um, and then now on the flip side, we have virtual reality headsets on animals, um, mainly cows. So this farmer out in Moscow noticed that his cows were not producing as much. Um, so what he wanted to go do, he wanted to go figure out why. And I guess one of the reasons why is because the cows were in, I would say, environments that were not um, ideal, <laughs> ideal for the cows. Uh, now, me being a vegetarian, um, I have my own thoughts about this. But what the farmer actually went ahead and did, he got these custom fit VR headsets um, for his cows. It's actually two headsets in one. I can kind of show you. Uh, this is a YouTube video. I'll drop this link to the YouTube video on the description as well. Um, but it's kind of like two VR headsets in one. Uh, and what he actually does is play a scenery uh, of basically a nice pasture, a, a wonderful land of the, you know, for the cow to be in a better state of mind so that they can produce a whole lot more uh, milk in the, in, in, for that matter. Um, so what it does, it helps to lower their anxiety levels um, just by being immersed in that virtual world um, by showing them, you know, hey, it's nice, and, <laughs> it's nice and sunny outside or, you know, the grass is actually greener on the other side kind of thing. Uh, again, me, in my opinion, keeping animals in captivity uh, for our purposes, human consumption or whatever, is not very ideal, but hey, this is the world that we live in. And uh, I'm not gonna not gonna sit here and try to fight against it, but at least they're doing something quote unquote nice for these cows in order to uh, continue to producing that milk for the people in that case. Alrighty, so that is the three that I really wanted to talk about here today. Uh, I do have a bonus one though. It's one of those in case you didn't know kind of thing. So the last one here is: Did you know about e-waste? I'm not sure if anybody has actually heard of e-waste, but e-waste is just electronic waste. We know that when we throw away stuff, um, all the garbage, um, furniture, everything that we have in our house, as soon as we throw it away, it goes where? To the dump, to the landfill um, in our local community, city, or whatever. Um, but what happens to actually the electronic items that we have in our house, the TVs that we have, the, you know, people go out and buy new TV every Black Friday. Uh, what about microwaves? What about all these cell phones, tablets, laptops, and stuff like that? When they go bad, what do we do with them? Well, we throw them out. Um, but what we can do is actually recycle them. Uh, I myself have, you know, technology as well. I got this microphone that I'm using. Uh, I got a television, laptop, cell phone, you know, um, all the electronics and cars. We have a whole bunch of stuff that we don't think about what happens to the earth when we get rid of them because you really can't get rid of all of this stuff uh, once they're made you know people try to crush them down uh, people try to burn them they take them out to the ocean and <laughs> essentially just leave them there um, but that affects our entire world it's not something that we should be doing uh, what we should be doing is actually trying to recycle them because let's see in 2017 44 million tons 44 million tons of e-waste was created in the year 2017 alone. Um, and I mean, that was even just before the pandemic. Imagine what happened during the pandemic. Uh, people bought a lot of stuff during the pandemic. Um, so in the next coming years, what's going to happen to that stuff is going to start to die off. People are not probably going to recycle them. Um, other people don't like to buy used stuff anyway. Uh, so what's going to happen is going to be thrown to the landfills. Uh, and currently, 70% of all landfills are um, filled with just toxic waste uh, that are electronics. 70 whole percent. That is, in my opinion, a whole lot uh, for that. And then, you know, 25% of Americans claim to recycle um, electronic devices. That is not a lot. <laughs> this is not a lot of people that is actually recycling these uh, electronic devices. Uh, I'm not going to live me myself even though i don't upgrade my phone every season i don't you know i've had the same phone uh, for like five years now i don't plan to upgrade unless it actually does go bad um but there are people out there that actually do 
upgrade, you know, every year or something like that. And what do they do with their old phone? Some of them actually do trade them in, they get recycled, but some of them actually just, you know, keep them in their, you know, top drawer closet or something like that. Uh, and then essentially just let it sit there. Um, but you know, if everybody pitches in, everybody throws their hands up and it actually does go ahead and start to recycle, uh, that would be in my opinion, a lot, lot, lot more better for, uh, the earth and the world that we live in. So that being said, uh, I hope you all enjoyed this show today. Um, I will be back again tomorrow. Uh, so definitely stay tuned to hear about all of the, you know, ways that the earth is being, um, transformed <laughs> digitally, uh, how our lives are being transformed digitally. All right. See you guys later.